All right, let's move to post now. So the first thing we have to do, as always, is make sure we have correctly set the URL for the service. So remember this from set URL. There's a video here going through details. And there's a demo deployment of Epi Donate at this location. So there we go. So now in the right place. And let's now move to post. So the pattern is the same we use for get, except we have a second input argument where we can put the data. We want to post it at this address. So let's pick as an example this first token. There is already an entry, this one, ZDW, ZDW, and it says created that. Okay, so I did this in the wrong order. Let's first copy it and now get the token. You put it here. Notice two things will change. Instead of saying created, it will say hello at, and then you'll have the new date. Let's make sure this works. There it is, hello at, and we have the new date. If you look at the numbers, they'll be changing as I rerun it. You may remember that by default, if you don't provide an entry, it will create the default created at. Just a detail. Okay, so we are done here. All looks good. This is news now, so the donor can set read and write parameters for the donation in order, for example, to lock it from read or to lock it from write for that matter. If you want the donation to be fixed and available for reading, but not for changing. So in the read write section, explaining how this happens is by creating a field in the data called read write and having, then having the read and the write parameters by default, meaning if this field doesn't exist, the tool will behave, the service will behave as if read and write are both set to true. So let's do it. Let's do one at a time. So it's clear what we are doing here. So here are creating an object that says some data one, two, three, four, five at a given date and the date will be programmatically inserted and then read write is true. So this is all good. And if we post, we could use the same code, actually. Let's post x. Let's do it in a way we can read the results. So await. And this way we get the JSON structure. There it is. And since I have some date, there was a mistake, it should be some data. So let's go back there. Some data. And now we can post it. So some data is going to become some data. And I'll correct this in the wiki after the demo. And there we are. Okay, let's move on. So now let's change the value in X of the parameter read to false. So we could get it, potentially, or we could change it immediately, it doesn't matter. For consistency, I'm just going to copy and show that we can get X, we'll call it now Y, by simply getting it. So there is no blocking in the read parameter of read-write. So now we have a new parameter, Y. We have X, and now we have Y. So in Y, we are going to change the read to false. And now we submit it back again. So here we are doing get, now we do post. And instead of x, which is true for both read and write, we are going to use y, that is false for read. So this should block the reading and this blocking is done by the donor, him or herself, not by an administrator. And we don't need to call this Y. And there's a mistake here. Again, I promise to fix this in the, in the documentation. 
Here we go. So see now read says false. Right is still true. So can we read it? Let's give it a try. So I move this to get. We don't need a second input parameter, we're just reading. And you get an error. Reading blocked. So we are now at the point where we can talk about administrative privilege. So we posted it, we got it, and we got this error. So this is the error, and I'll you know, make sure to put it there. Now admin privilege. The admin privilege means that we are now going to provide an admin token, not a user token. So this is the admin acting on a record that was locked. And we are going to use the donor token, which corresponds to the JSON file. So it's the same name. Here we are going to read something that we just uh, found out that we couldn't. So let's try it. So we are getting, just like here, we put the donor token as a doc input parameter. Doc input parameter, so that's the document we are manipulating. And we pick one of the admin tokens. Here I just have one. Later on you'll see how you can create more. So we'll replace the admin token here by this. So we're calling. Here when we try to get this document, we were blocked. Here we go as an administrator. And we shouldn't be blocked. Let's find out. And indeed we weren't. So we are able to read, although read write says false. Why? Because now we go as administrators. So now let's say you also want to fix this. Let's say you want to unlock the object. The, the reader cannot, can't even read. Actually, you could write the change. But let's imagine that too is false. So we can make that false. So let's say why read write now you put write false and we submit it so post y and let's keep an eye on what's in the back end so you see read is false write is true by doing this write should be false and there it is so now the Donor can either read nor write it, so it's completely blocked from view. So, could the administrator change that? So, let's go to the pattern, which is the admin token, and then doc. Now, we are not trying to get, we are trying to post. And we are going to post the original x variable, where both read and write, this is x, remember? x from the beginning, where read and write are both true. So here we go. Now they're both true. So you just saw an example of how admin privilege overruled the block created by the donor. And so I'm going to complete the documentation and we are done.